All right, we're going to go through an example here of stress analysis in Inventor in anticipation that the structural analysis portion of Revit is not going to be as, uh, as robust as it is here. And also to show you, in fact, that you still need to be able to do some computations like sums of moments by hand, you always need to be ground truthing or checking your models when you're using engineering models and that is essentially what you do when you're doing structural analysis in a program like um, Inventor. You remember I talked about Feezy from Purdue when that becomes available and I love Sketch. There's incredible incredible things in the pipeline but we still need to be able to have some semblance especially in the field of how to go about basically dealing with torques and we're going to see the piece de resistance of this is going to be the idea of any vector being the, its magnitude times the unit vector lambda. And uh, we'll see how that plays out this week. That said, I'm going to go ahead and just open up now first um, a couple of parts that I just had dealt with. Um, and they were basically called struct part, let's see, simple roller joint simple beam. I think that's a simple beam. I'm going to open up the part and explain. I use this part or this process both within the part manufacturer and then within the assembly manufacturer to kind of mimic what was being done in the beam, what was being done in one of those examples. And so you'll notice here this particular beam I cut a hole here for a pin joint that's going to allow it a cantilever over this side. I cut a hole here later for a pin joint which is going to let that member come down. And this basically was that problem when you had one beam resting on another. So again within here you have the kind of history once again. You had the 3D sketch, you had a single sketch kind of push it through and then you had uh, actually some subtractions going on here. And I did that so because the model did not let me actually rest did not appear that allowed me to rest a corner on that structure. So I went through this process of course by first drafting a 3D sketch making a couple of work planes and then drafting a 2D sketch down here and then doing a, an extrude from end to end and then finally doing a subtract um, and then a couple of holes. So that was what the simple beam looked like. I'm going to close that up. I'm going to open up now the assembly See if it lets me choose just an assembly drawing. Mix it down a little bit. And I think simple beam looks something like that. And bring that open. And you're going to see how essentially I laid that up. And then now I'll talk about the essentially I brought in one beam, one member, and another member. I use constraints and or grip snaps. If you think about grip snap is another great thing to move around. All right. Grip snaps. Um, and also you see this is a little bit out of rotation here. I, we haven't yet mastered this but in terms of making this thing actually rotate if you would, there's also the rotate command. You notice there it gives me that kind of little bit of ability to do this, right? Especially depending on the perspective we're in. Done. Now, of course, that beam is out of whack. So, depending on your view, whether it's perspective or not, you might or might not be able to realize whether these things are actually coplanar. But that's a reasonable approximation for now. Once again, learning that. Probably your best way to do a lot of these things is going to be to draft up your center lines and get a lot of this done in AutoCAD or use the frame assembler. So I brought in two, the, two copies of the same part and then I brought something in called roller joint. And if you notice there, there are some contacts. So these one here, these are showing tangential contacts. One of the constraints, those then converted when we did a stress analysis. So conceptually you should recognize this problem. It had a pin joint, a roller joint, a pin joint, and then it had a force coming down here. And so once you go ahead and 
put all these things, bring in the different individual parts, you can go, of course, to the environments, and go to the stress analysis, and eventually to the dynamic simulation. And you can remember to assign materials, right? And so in this case, I guess I made one right click assign materials. And I guess I made some welded aluminum and some steel. I'll make them all steel in this point. And there it is. That's what we're looking for here. The styles editor. As we segue into not only properties, if you remember the, the shape equation, 1 over rho equals m over ei. Remember that there are E is the stiffness of the material. But notice here in our styles editor, we see a bunch of information that we should start to recognize. And I noticed I had some students in class the other day that knew that were from a machine tool, and they knew the mass density of um, steel. So and it was something like 2 point something something. We know it, of course, is 490 pounds per cubic inch. Let's see what if we have here, steel, stainless, steel mild, and there you go, 0.284 pounds mass per square inch. You have Young's modulus, Poisson's ratio, the yield strength, tensile strength, thermal conductivity, thermal expansion, all the typical things that we've talked about before and that can come become useful. So that's, we finally find where that is, which is a great thing. Different colors, different lights, and different materials. So huge stuff there as we do our models. And then of course what we need to do is we assign loads. This load here was assigned using a remote load, remote force, and what essentially comes of this when you're putting any of these forces on there it ties it to the coordinate of the thing you're putting it onto so both that and this force here gets tied to the coordinate system of the the thing to which it's touching so you have to be aware of that you have to of course have constraints you said we have one pin constraint there we have one here and one pin constraint there and then a fixed constraint on this item right there the idea of contacts, we have sliding no separation both here and here. And we have the loads as described, remote force and force. So all that right, can be applied and then iterated and changed and, and reapplied. So what did we have? Once again, we had to make sure that we had parts then we actually apply constraints and those constraints here are generally placed in this model. It's not necessarily the constraints that you had when you were putting the things together which you can remove of course and put back. We have forces, we can do moments as well. In other words here you have different loads, you can do force, you can do pressure, bearing, moment, gravity and remote force. You have different constraints. You have the pin constraint you have a frictionless constraint, and that's actually kind of what we would have wanted here, separation, no, um, no friction. And in all reality, you have mesh, you have lots of different things here, show the boundary conditions. So whether or not that's on or off. So it's kind of showing you, when I look around here, clicking around, it's turning, showing the forces. All right, so all that said, we then hit simulate. Very often you might need to update, so you're gonna simulate. You're gonna run. And in this, you can start to develop a sense of why you wanna do the one-offs very quickly. And I'm gonna tell you right now, once again, all right, we see how this kind of deforms out. In this case, because we had a force here, what do we have? Some of the moments about this zero is zero. You have a force this way. You have a contact force up. Force times distance equals force times distance, or R cross F. Now you have a force down, and you do the same thing once again. So amongst the things you can report on here is contact pressure. And if you think about contact pressure there, right-click. We're going to activate contact pressure, and our expectation will be 
but you should have some severe contact pressure right there. And you think you'd have some there, but not necessarily based on this force here. So this kind of general sense of how you can use this model to do calculations is going to be pretty substantial. And we're going to expect you to do it now soon with the trusses that you've drafted and make that another assignment so we can start going within that structural design drafting class. Thanks for listening.